as Randy has put it, the, the um, concentration of the active ingredient um, is equivalent to one molecule in a volume of water that the size of the solar system. It, uh, so obviously there can be nothing chemical going on. The, in, in that sense, it's true that the experimental dose is identical to the control dose. But what the loophole is, uh, well, it's not chemistry, it's physics. Uh, something about the original ingredient, something about the trace of what the original ingredient, which has become a trace through, through successive uh, dilution, has imprinted itself upon the water. So although there aren't any molecules left, the water retains some kind of memory of the original molecule. Now, you're not intended to laugh at this because this is a, this is a good example of what I'm talking about, conceivable perinormal. I mean, it, suppose that, that somebody did a really, really good test of a, a stage one test of homeopathy. Now, because it's stage one, remember, we're not concerning ourselves at this stage with whether we understand how it can come about. We know that it can't come about by chemistry because there aren't any molecules of the active ingredient left in the um, grotesquely over-diluted control. So it can't be chemistry. But we're, we're, we're leaving open the question of how it works. We're, we're doing our stage one test with an open mind. So we do something like get, um, I don't know, a, 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 thousand, uh, a thousand patients who are, who are ill with something or other, and we divide them in half, and we um, randomly divide them in half in a double-blind way, so nobody knows uh, which, which individuals are um, going to be, receive the um, homeopathic dose, which individuals are going to receive the control dose. Um, we, the doctors who examine the patients before treatment don't know which are controlled and which are experimentals. Um, the homeopathic treatment which is prescribed for each patient is up to the best homeopath you can find and every patient has his own or her own um, prescription by very good reputable homeopath. Uh, and so, and this is done regardless of whether the patient is in the experimental um, treatment or the, control, uh, or the control group. They all have a prescription written out, the ideal prescription for them by a homeopath. And then they are all given the identical um, homeopathic treatment with a single exception that in the controls there is no active ingredient. It's important even that the control substance, which, which starts off as pure water, should go through the same series of 32 or whatever it is, it is succussive dilutions. There's nothing to dilute, but nevertheless, do it, because that's the only way you, you could say that the experimental and the control dose is the same. The homeopaths who do the shaking up together of the, 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 the um, dilution and the dilution and the dilution, they don't know whether they're diluting a control or an experimental, but they still go through the motions of successive dilution. The patients are all given their successively diluted dose. On the one hand, nothing has been diluted. On the other hand, uh, a putative active ingredient has been diluted. And you then, uh, again, um, uh, blind, um, do, the, do the analysis. Only when finally everything has been done, do you reveal uh, when, they, when the doctors have looked again at the patients and, and judged whether they've improved or, or not, when the homeopaths indeed have looked at the patients and decided whether each one has improved or not, only then do you break the code to decide um, uh, which ones were treatment and which ones were controls. Now, if that were all done properly, and if you got a, a p-value, it would have to be a very, very low p-value, that's the probability of getting a, a false result um, by chance, uh, um, if you found a stage one had been um, uh, passed and there really, really, really is an effect, do the experiment again, do the experiment again, there really, really is an effect, then you turn to stage two. 
and then you do what you would actually have to take seriously, something like the possibility that the water has a memory. It's, we don't laugh at it because, because that's the whole point about the perinormal, is that um, we don't yet have the physics by definition that, that qualifies us to laugh at it. However, if homeopaths did that experiment, if they really, really passed stage one, then the entire world should sit up and take notice because anybody who managed to uh, demonstrate that and then go on to stage two and find out what the mechanism was, if it really was a new physical field, a new force in physics that nobody had, had um, discovered before, then they would get the Nobel Prize not only for medicine but for physics as well. <laughs>